Oh. This normally has sound. Um. Okay. I, I'm, I'm gonna acapella it. And then there's horses going, I'm a horse and I'm in a state of distress. And then one of them goes, I'm a horse and I just got done running. Terrain, 1311, the castle of King Charles of Britannia. I have grave news. King Charles is dead and my teeth are immaculate. The news spread as quickly as a plague. King Charles of Britannia was dead. Dead without an heir. All through Britannia and Europe, local lords gather their forces to stake claim on the throne of Britannia. Or to support someone else's claim with hopes their support would be remembered. Civil war was the most terrible of all. It could haunt a nation for generations. Battles were bloody and chaotic. Poor leaders destroyed even the finest of armies. And then there's clanging and banging around like somebody's going into a kitchen and you don't know what the fuck they're doing. There was only one force strong enough to give a nation stability in these dark times. Fortress was strong enough to turn a count into a king. I probably rushed through that. Oh, to become king, you must conquer. <laughs> Castle, siege, and conquest. <laughs> Yeah, I nailed it. Sort of. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, that was just awful. Um, I was not expecting to have to do that. But, um... Hi! <laughs> hi, everybody. My name is Effing Controller. The all-powerful, the all-knowing, the all-consuming. Yes, I will eat just about anything. And I will play just about anything. Uh, and this game is called Castles, Siege, and Conquest if you somehow missed the thrilling introduction. It is actually a sequel uh, made by Interplay. Uh, and it was actually you know, the sequel to a game called Castles, which to me, I, I haven't played it, but it sounds like a dumbed-down version of this game, which is probably appropriate for me to be playing, but I uh, like this game. It's one of my old Mac standbys, although with that said, it was not solely a Mac game. It was released for PC. And it is available now if you wish to purchase this fine game. It's at uh, Good Old Games. That's G O G dot com. And should you want to purchase that or any other highly wonderful classic game, go there. Uh, G O G is actually a really cool site. No joke. I'm not joking right now. Um, so basically, what this is, it's a kingdom management simulator, for lack of a better term. You. Uh, are out to go claim the throne of Britannia, province by province, enemy by enemy. And Britannia uh, is basically France in the era of the Hundred Years' War. I don't know why they didn't just call it France. It doesn't make any sense, but I guess it just makes it a little bit easier to write about. I don't know. Um, actually, I can kind of see why they would do that, and I'll get to that. Um, we're going to go ahead and start a new game. And I've been playing a few kind of dry runs if you will, and I've been using the name Le Faire, which I don't know if it's French for anything, I haven't bothered to look, but it probably means like uh, the uh, cup holder or the beer cozy or something stupid like that, I don't know. And we are going to play as one of the five lords of Britannia. We're going to set out to rule Britannia. But ump bump Yeah, I, that's the thing that confuses me about it. I mean, well anyway. Um, we have Valois, Anjou, Albion, Burgundy, and Aragon, the five different factions. And they're supposed to be arranged roughly in the order of easiest to most difficult. Valois and then Aragon being the hardest. Um, that's not really the case, basically. Valois is definitely the most uh, powerful, has the most resources to start with, and has possibly the best starting position. But Anjou, to me, should be at the bottom of the list because they have an execrably bad starting position. They're in the middle of the map, which is, you know, if you're playing a game like this, if you can have an edge, a border um, that doesn't, uh, isn't next to anybody, that's great. <laughs> but, um, but just move Anjou to the bottom and that's pretty much the order of how difficult this game is. 
Um, and of course, Valois and Anjou are supposed to represent the two main French dynastic forces um, in France. I don't know why they didn't even bother changing the names for these two. Uh, Albion is supposed to just be uh, England, just their Norman influence uh, on French politics. Uh, you know, they kind of fought each other during the Hundred Years' War a little bit over this you know whole dynastic struggle. So I guess they deserve a spot in the game. Uh, Aragon is actually Spain, and Spain did uh, try to manipulate French politics quite a lot during this uh, time period, tried to gain land and possibly gain the crown itself, but uh, I don't think that they made much of an active military advance into France. That could be wrong. I'm not very good with medieval history, so... But I like to play as Burgundy, because I like wine, I like the color, and I like... Wake Up Run Burgundy, as well as, to a lesser extent, Anchorman. Um, Burgundy is basically the little duchy or county or something that's in between France and uh, the Holy Roman Empire during this period of time. They shift allegiance back and forth forever, like an IM message, um, to France, to the HRE. They're independent sometimes, just doing their own thing, but they're a pain in the ass. But the reason I like playing as them for starters, is that they're a nice balance of difficult and hard. They have a good starting position, uh, well, better one than Anjou, at least. And also, um, the each of these different uh, factions has their own, like, faction leader, and they're all different, basically, stereotypical medieval people. <laughs> like, I think Valois is the, the grim warrior or something, and Anjou is like a fop, and is their lands are basically ruled by the guy's mom. Aragon is like this sneaky... The sneaky Spaniard. And then Albion is like an upright, true, chivalrous warrior or something. Burgundy, uh, Philippe of Burgundy, I think is his name. He likes to fuck things. So that's why I'm going to play as him. He has deposited his trouser snake in many a sausage wallet. So that's why he's my favorite. Yeah. Okay, so anyways, these are self-explanatory. Plots are kind of bullshit, but I'm going to keep them enabled because they kind of will make this a little bit more difficult because we do have it on easy. Uh, there are four difficulties, um, and this is literally impossible. This is, you might as well just turn off your computer and, you know, go punch yourself in the balls over and over again because that's exactly what that is. Um, commodities... I've been debating whether or not I should change this, and I think I'm going to keep it at geographic. Random is just like, there's four different commodities, first of all, and if you set it to random, it'll just kind of, you know, throw them at the map, and they may all end, like, a given commodity may all end up all in one corner of the map, which is terrible. Um, balanced, it tries to make it evenly distributed. Geographic makes it so that it's supposedly, I think, supposed to be based on what the map or what uh, the province looks like on the map, I guess. I don't really even know. But it's it's a nice um, uh, compromise between the two. I am considering either going to one of the other of these because I've been finding that I'm. It, it's basically still random. So I do want... Well, I'm not going to explain that too much. That's a boring thing to talk about. <laughs> so plots, again, like I was saying, they're stupid, kind of, but we'll get to that. And then we have battles, and we want to be able to watch the battles, even though they are rude, like ridiculously simplistic. But let's just go ahead and get started, and start by pausing. So this area here says Castle, Siege, and Conquest, and that is for if you forget what the fuck you're doing. This is for if you forget who the fuck you are. And this is your score, actually. This is important. I think you need to get it to 7,000 before you can basically declare yourself king. Um, so you have to bear that in mind. Um, this is the date. The date is largely unimportant, although I think you have a limited amount of time in which you can beat the game, I guess. Um, I think you have 50 years. I have no idea. <clears throat> so, then you go over here, and then you've got these boards, these little planks here, and they have little icons next to them. And these icons represent um, your ability to perform certain tasks. This is administrative tasks, this is uh, military tasks, this is uh, diplomatic tasks. Uh, administrative stuff is like building castles, as well as collecting resources. So it's um, going to be one of your most frequently used. This is your military, this is training troops and invading places, this is your diplomatic, this is uh, going to be sending 
emissaries and sending scouts out. Um, it's important to keep this at three because there are ways of reducing this number below three. This is each number basically represents how quickly you can do a, a given task. And as you keep doing tasks in a given field, you start to um, the game. I think arbitrarily will give you an extra point just because you've been, you know, it's like if you don't use it, you lose it. Except the opposite. If you use it, you you get more of it. That would that didn't really require that uh, contrasting statement, but I'm standing by it. Okay, so then, in order to do the various tasks in each of these fields... Oh, and by the way, if you get, uh, I think, to five in a given field, you get an extra plank. So you get to multitask a little bit, so that's cool. Um, to do your different tasks, you have resources, you have food, lumber, uh, iron, and then gold. <clears throat> and as you can see on the different... Well, there's a bunch of different provinces, and on the province here, where we are, which is Provence, which I don't think is historically where Burgundy was, but whatever. Um, they have a tree here. So um, we can collect lumber from this province. Isn't that nice? And I don't think historically Provence is known for its timber, but whatever. Um, these are your armed forces. These are your soldiers, your archers, and your knights. We have none knights. Knights are pretty cool, but they're not that important, especially in the beginning of the game. And then this little empty boxes are different siege engines that we'll hopefully be getting so that's I guess a pretty good rundown um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started but actually I should explain what our kind of priorities are gonna be we want to set up a perimeter basically and it's a gonna be a giant fuck off barrier so that um, as the other rulers start to progress our way we won't be able they won't be able to you know sidle on in and take any of our shit um, so with that in mind, we need to know where the other rulers are. Um, usually, Valois starts in one of these three provinces. And then uh, Aragon starts in one of these three, I believe. Uh, Albion is usually up here. And then poor old Anjou is usually stuck in one of these in this area, I think. They just have no luck at all as far as the starting position because they are sandwiched between everybody and especially on, uh, Albion and uh, Valois. So they're not usually going to last in the game, but um, they do... I don't know. They're going to be a nuisance for us because they do eventually start going southeast a little bit. So the thing to bear in mind is that we have potentially three forces trying to kind of, you know, meander on our way. So we have to set up basically a a reasonably good sized perimeter and in order to do that I'm going to start by um, assuming that basically Valois is going to get this province here and so I need to get these two provinces because otherwise he will uh, start moving into my land it's not technically my land yet but I want it to be and then I'm going to probably so I'm going to invade these two and then go back here this is kind of complicated um, go here so that I can keep Aragon out of my hair. That sounds like a weird statement. I've got all this Aragon in my hair. <laughs> and then I'm going to come back and take this province. It's usually best if you start somewhere other than Provence because you can seal it up and then just basically make it yours without having to invade anybody. But um, I digress. Okay, so we're going to get started and I'm going to kind of explain things a little bit on the fly. Um, so we're starting by attacking something, <laughs> and uh, to do that you can use your different little resources here. Since it's a military task, you, use, you can use all of your military points if you so desire, but you can also take points from your other pools to make the task go more quickly, and that's generally a good idea. And we're going to go ahead and scout one of these provinces to our west, Nîmes, I believe. And then we have extra points left over in our uh, admin pool. So we're going to go ahead and cut some timber because we don't have anything better to do. It's really important to actually try to use as many of your points as possible. Simply because the more you do something in a given pool, the more likely it is that you'll get more points in it. And it just makes it more efficient. And the AI is definitely doing that too. They're maximizing their efficiency. And it's really irritating because they move much more quickly than they really should be able to do. So that's kind of an annoyance. But we'll deal with it I guess. So I can speed up time a little bit if I want but we'll just wait until the scouting is done. Okay so we've scouted Nimes. that would just show us if it was owned by anybody 
It also shows us what resource it has, and food is a very important one. So um, we're going to hopefully be able to snatch that up quickly. And hopefully Aragon doesn't start spilling over this way. Um, the AI is very unpredictable, and Aragon could just decide to go completely north. And this is interesting. Your court jester finally learned some new jokes. People celebrate. Do we get anything out of that? No. <laughs> Usually, I mean, sometimes you'll get those little pop-ups like that that are sort of quote-unquote plots. And they'll give you a little, like, a piece of iron or something like that. That's all well and good. But... Plots generally are more complicated than that, and they are bullshit, as I have said. Um, I will go into that once we get one. So we're going to attack Pro, uh, Valence here. And this is the battle map. For simple field battles, it's not that... It's, it's kind of dumb. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start the battle. We can... These are our troops, of course. These are the enemy troops. We can move our troops. Move this dude in the back doesn't really make a huge difference. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start the battle though. Like I've tried different things where you have the infantry on one wing and then you've got your archers on the other side, but it, it, really, it just really makes no difference. I'm sad to say. I wish it did, but it just doesn't. And we lost a guy, but that's okay. Nice! My reputation as a general improves. Because I am outstanding. So we've taken Valence. We're gonna go ahead and attack Bourbon. Why would you attack Bourbon? Everyone likes Bourbon. And then we're going to scout Dijon. Because we want to know if uh, Valois is on his way down. And Valence, we didn't scout it, but fortunately it wasn't occupied by anybody. Uh, and it has iron, so that's good. We've got at least three of the four resources in this general area. Hopefully we can find one with gold, although it's not completely necessary to have all four of the resources in your domain because, um, I should mine some iron, speaking of resources, um, because you can actually trade with other factions for it, so that's okay. And I think I will speed things up just a touch. And as mentioned, Valois is in Dijon, so we need to move quickly here in Bourbon just so that we don't, uh, have him infiltrate our area here. <laughs> Stay above the bikini zone, Valois. Okay, so we're gonna attack Bourbon. 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 <laughs> and we're gonna begin the battle, and it's gonna be pretty much the same. I sped it up there a little bit, but if you just so much as tap the speed up button, it goes crazy go nuts. So uh, we're gonna try to avoid doing that too much. He says as he immediately does that again. People will long remember this day, my liege. We have wrested bourbon from our enemy. <laughs> Huzzah, forsooth. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to actually move down this way. And the thing about this game is that if you don't... Um, if you don't build up a perimeter like this, you kind of... It just makes things messy, for reasons that I'll go into here. Oh, and we've got gold, so we should be pretty well set for resources. Um, the way that the game works is that you have to, um, have to think of what you're going to say before you say it, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, um, each of your provinces has a chance to revolt if you don't have a castle in it. Or, you can also build a big castle and it will kind of oversee the neighboring provinces. So that kind of is a big part of the strategy. You want to have provinces that touch other provinces, and uh, if they touch them and they're, you know, the touching thing is awkward, but it is how it works, I guess. I have to say touching a lot. Uh, it basically will uh, keep them from rebelling if you have a good castle. And I'll build one here in a minute but and explain that a little bit more. So now we have an emissary sent from the Pope, and the Pope is an asshole. Um, he will come by and say, hey, you're a horrible person, give me money. And it's actually, you have to stay on his good side in order to actually win the game. There's reasons beyond just simply having him, you know, you want him to like him because he not only is the one that uh, declares you king, basically, but if you uh, start attacking enemies that are under his, that he likes, basically, he'll start saying, you're a fucker and your, your relations will start to go down, and if they get one, 
you have a very serious risk of getting excommunicated. So it is definitely in your interest to stay on his good side. However, with that said, three gold is what he's asking me for. For an indulgence, we're going to refuse that. Two gold is... There we go. Basically, the emissaries that you get from the different AI players, they'll start to kind of bargain with you. One gold is fantastic. So we actually got a point of relations with the Pope for paying him one gold. That's fine. I can deal with that. Alright, so let's speed things up. And Auvergne. I was just scouting that mostly to see if anyone was there. And a local monastery names me ruler of the year. No one cares. <laughs> what the fuck? That's mean. I care. Okay. So let's see. We're still in the process of preparing to attack me all. We're refining gold. And... Loire has lots of timber, so we're going to have lots of timber. That's actually okay. And we have the first appearance of a black and white movie. It's immense. It's being projected over the... about a quarter of the whole nation. Alright. We're positioned near Lyon, and we're going to attack. And we're charging in with what appear to be rifles with bayonets. <laughs> I guess those are just probably spears. And so on. Okay. So another battle like this. Let's go ahead and speed things up. And we appear to have lost some men. But we didn't lose enough to actually diminish the number of these. If you lose two of a certain troop type, you actually will lose one, um, one, uh, one of these, I guess. One unit. Derp. Okay. So let's, uh, finish up here. We're gonna attack Cressy. Croissant. Croissant. <laughs> and, uh, set up the last little bit of our border here, hopefully. While we're doing that, we're going to re-scout... Actually, we'll scout... We can't scout there. We're going to scout Neem again, because I'm worried that Aragon is on his way. And this here is some old-fashioned copyright protection. And it's... Um, probably... I'm probably not going to record this, just because I do have... I, I want to preserve this game. I want you to go out and buy it. Um, I have the Mac discs, but I have also bought the PC version because I wanted to give it a try, and I like the Mac version better, so... But it does have the manual with it, so there you go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop here, just so that uh, I can do this without imputing the, uh, I don't know, the integrity of the game. So, uh, this has been Epping Controller playing a little bit of Castle Siege and Conquest, and I'm going to start up again once I basically just answer this question. I already know the answer.